Ba -ba -da -bam! Last Outrider here. Are you ready for the 13th Black Crusade? Yes? Good, because we will let the galaxy burn! In the greatest of the infamous Black Crusades, the Black Legion descend upon the Imperium in the vanguard of a vast army of traitor legions and demons baying for the blood of mankind. Abaddon the Despoiler leads them from the Eye of Terror. The time of his bloody vengeance against the Emperor finally at hand. In the wake of the Gothic War, the Black Legion launched almost continuous raids against the Imperium. The systems and sectors around the Eye of Terror were plunged into near constant warfare and fighting, engulfing countless worlds and drawing in reinforcements from across the entire galaxy. Abaddon wanted to keep the Imperium spread thin across the Segmentum Obscurus and bleed it white in the process. As long as his foes remained on the defensive, trying to fortify their worlds and fend off his constant attacks, the Black Legion would have time to gather and reinforce. Abaddon needed this time to rally the traitor legions together. The Despoiler had hoped to stir up the ancient hatreds and memories of the heresy within the legions before unleashing them upon mankind. Millennia of blasphemous deals and terrible pacts were finally coming to fruition for the War Master as the Chaos Gods bestowed their dark blessings upon him. The Black Legion had grown upon the strength of its oaths to Abaddon. Countless traitors united in hatred for the Imperium and fueled by their unquenchable bloodlust. Bestowed with the mark of Chaos Ascendant, Abaddon alone held dominion over the gathering hordes, his will keeping the legions in line and maintaining the turbulent alliance between men, demons, and gods. Abaddon used the final centuries of the 41st millennium to continue his quest for artifacts. Following whispers in the warp and auguries of his sorcerer cabals, he uncovered the resting place of many a powerful and forgotten weapon. One such twisted relic, the skull of Kur Nagar, lay buried beneath the crystal glades of the maiden world of Lilandria. It had been hidden there for eons by a long vanished alien race, and the Eldar had transformed the barren world unaware of the skull's existence. With a small cadre of Black Legion legionnaires, the War Master landed on the world and enslaved its local population with cruel efficiency overseeing gangs of pale and ragged slaves, the Black Legion began excavating for the artifact. Forewarned of the War Master's coming, a group of Aliatak Rangers led a guerrilla war against the Black Legion. Ilian, Ildanira's peaceful crystal forests reverberated to the sound of gunfire as the two forces engaged in a protracted skirmishes, the Black Legion repeatedly trying to bring the Eldar to battle, though the Zeonos remained elusive. Finally, the Chaos Space Marines set the forces of Ildanira ablaze, lance fire from the vengeful spirit turning the great swaths of the ancient crystal trees into a shifting sea of molten glass. 
Abaddon's victory over the Rangers was short-lived, however. As before he could deliver the death blow, a fleet of Aliatox warships appeared in orbit. With his limited forces still ill-prepared to face such a direct onslaught, Abaddon drove his minions to exhaustion and death, retrieving the skull with just enough time to get off the planet before its devastation. The Gates of Pandorax In the Demeter Sector, Abaddon led an alliance of traitor legions in the invasion of the imperial world of Pythos. The location of an ancient hidden gateway to the warp. Another piece of his dark design, the War Master fell upon the world with a force of demon engines and infernal war machines. In the space of a few bloody days, the major hives were overrun, and the local defense forces crushed beneath the might of the traitor legions. Only a small contingent of Katachin guardsmen managed to escape the destruction, trekking through the world's inhospitable jungle to the relative safety of the nearest mountain range. Abaddon commenced the complex rituals and sacrifices that would open the damnation cache, a portal between reality and the warp breaking open seals which had remained untouched since the time of the Horus heresy, heeding the impassioned cries for salvation from Pythos, the Dark Angels chapter, led by Azrael himself, came to the Defender's aid. Supporting the Space Marines were the Grey Knights, dispatched to deal with the escalating demonic incursion and the dire peril that the damnation cash posed. Both Imperial forces smashed through the traitor legion blockade around Pythos in an epic space battle that pitted the finest ships of the Imperium, supported by the Rock, the Dark Angel's fortress monastery against the ancient vessels of the traitor legions. After the Chaos Fleet was finally driven from orbit and back into the void, the Space Marines were able to send their troops down through the atmosphere, bringing the war to its ruined hives and hostile jungles. Failing to allow this distraction to draw him away from the awakening of the damnation cache, Abaddon sent an alliance of legions to hold the loyalists at bay. Before either the Dark Angels nor the Grey Knights could stop him, the War Master finally opened the portal to the warp. Demons! spilling out across Pythos. The ensuing conflict devastated the world as reality itself bent and buckled under the raw power of the warp. The unleashed energies created rampant psychic phenomena and the space marines fought under boiling skies of blood and in roiling clouds of keening spirits. All across the sector, latent psychics were awakened to full and terrible awareness, and rebellions sprung up like cancerous boils on dozens of imperial worlds in the sector. About after a long and bitter struggle, a squad of Grey Knights managed to reach the damnation cache and close the warp portal. Starved of their demonic allies, the traitor legions were forced into the defensive, and finally 
into retreat. Abaddon's forces left Pythos, escaping the vengeance of the Imperium. But the world had been irrevocably tainted by the touch of the warp. Its once proud cities and vast wilds twisted into a nightmarish landscape. Before the portal was closed, however, Abaddon took with him a single psyker, rumored to be of prodigious strength and the bearer of a unique gift that would aid the war master in his forthcoming Black Crusade. Next time, Army of the Dark Gods. So I think people can finally see the parallels here between Abaddon the Despoiler and Archeon the Ever Chosen. Both are playing pretty much the exact same roles. And Archeon the Ever Chosen destroyed the old world. So, unless Games Workshop plans to go a completely different path and Abaddon I don't know, gets a cold and dies. You're probably looking at the end of the 40k universe here, people. Until next time, bye. Mm -hmm.